Welcome back to Cash Budget Insights, where I am working on seeing if this whole cash budgeting thing really works. I'm personally tracking every dollar using a zero-based budget due to my daughter's chronic illness, as well as controlling some of my own personal emotional impulse spending on the really hard days. I would love to have you give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. That's a free way to throw a little support my way and help this channel grow. It means so much to me and I can't say thank you enough. If you haven't heard it today, I want you to know you're awesome, you're valuable, and you have a purpose. Now let's dive in. Well, friends, I think to get started, I am going to open up to our January calendar because I cannot even believe that it is the almost the end of January. Today is January 25th, and I'm looking at really what kind of cash I'm going to need for this last week of January. So yes, that's right. Today is Thursday, and that means we are going to be filling out the cash planning worksheet. I am really loving the system I've created. On Thursdays, I do my cash planning worksheet. I look at my calendar. I look at what's left for me to allocate into my envelopes, and I kind of make a plan every single week. This has really helped me like stay in tune with what's going on in my envelopes. And also, you know, when you're just starting out, I think just continually getting in and making small goals for each week, kind of to set yourself up for success in your different budgeting categories. It's really helped me. So this is going to be my fourth cash planning worksheet that I'll have done for the month of January, and it'll be my last one. So the next time we do one of these, it's hard to believe, but it'll be February. Holy cow, that is crazy. Time just goes so much quicker the older you get. I can remember being a freshman and thinking, how in the world do I still have four years of high school? This is never going to end. <laughs> this is going to take forever. And now I just feel like years fly by so fast. So I don't know what it is exactly that changes when you are young to when you are an adult with so much going on. It just time is flying. So I always remind my kids, when you get older, you're going to realize how fast time goes. But when you're young, it just feels like molasses. So I was a testament to that. All right. So for my cash planning, as far as my month at a glance goes, the only big thing, actually, I have two because we had an ortho appointment on the 23rd. X-rays were taken. And my one son is for sure getting braces and I've got one hot on his heels that's going to need braces, but still has quite a few baby teeth to lose. And I'm sorry if this is like, you're like, Hey, I didn't sign up to listen about your kid's dental, you know, records, but, um, so I'm sorry if I'm oversharing, but basically she took x-rays of my almost 10 year old, his birthday is coming up. And she was like, Oh my word, he needs to have these two baby teeth pulled because his adult teeth are coming in at an angle that it's not like dislodging the baby tooth root. So he'll never actually really be able to pull out the tooth. Oh goodness. So I was like, okay, <laughs> so now I have to figure out what it's going to cost. And he's actually getting that done on his birthday, which is, I didn't even notice that when I scheduled it, but it'll actually be, or was it Tuesday? Maybe it was, oh, I hope I didn't schedule it on his birthday. Well, regardless, he's getting two baby teeth pulled and that's money I didn't plan on spending. So that is why you have an emergency fund. So I'm probably going to have to pull that money for the dentist. Um, oh my, which I, I really do think I scheduled on his birthday. That was terrible. Well, regardless, I'm going to jot that down and I'm going to have to pull that from our emergency fund and then just replenish that or put that money back um, as I have it. So to replenish, you know, taking it out for this. So that's why you have an emergency fund. I'm grateful that we have that, you know, somewhat built up. So I am able to have these unexpected expenses. Of course, when I went to the orthodontist, I didn't know that that was going to also be tacked on a teeth pulling and baby teeth at that, which just seems like, why am I paying for baby teeth to be pulled? But, you know, she explained it to me. And the idea is that if we can pull those baby teeth out, that's going to bring those adult teeth in straighter and hopefully in the long run, save us money with braces down the road, which I actually found um, really great that our orthodontist was willing to take those steps. I mean, she's not going to make any money if he has baby teeth pulled, but for her, um, you know, trying to save him being in braces longer than he needs to is great. So I was really happy with that overall. And after seeing the x-ray and everything, it made sense. So it was the right decision. Anyway, so I do, I have so many, there's just a lot of teeth in our family with six people. So the dentist really adds up and then you add in an, 
you know, orthodontist now, which is probably going to be in our future till all my kids graduate. So yeah, we just, I should have went to school to be a dentist or orthodontist. That probably would have been really smart. But anyway, I am going to have to budget for these two things for sure. But other than that, I don't really have a lot going on as far as like events or other bills do. I try to have all my bills come out in the beginning of the month because I always feel like things are a little tighter at the end of the month. So I like to know that all my bills are paid because a lot of these bills will ask you when you want to have your bill come out. So I really like that now. But okay, so that takes care of month at a bill. And I'm sorry if this is going to be an extremely chatty cash planning, but... That's all right. You know, it's okay. We'll get, we'll get through this. Okay. So the other thing I like to look at is, let's see, um, I'm actually going to jot down. I am going to just make a note here that I have the dentist and I have that ortho appointment. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to pay those in cash. I know the dentist, I probably will, but I'm not quite sure how much that's going to be to get baby teeth pulled. I mean, I have no idea. And then the ortho, I'm actually going to pay on a credit card and pay it off. So I'm probably not going to take that out yet, but I will probably repay that back in February. And then um, grocery, I owe 105. So I'm just going to make a note of that. And this is from the online spending reconciliation we did. So I'll explain that in just a second. Um, so I still owe, I said 105. Okay. And then kids I owe 11. Okay. These will be a little bit out of order, but that's okay. Um, so just to explain what I did here. So we get paid once a month and instead of giving myself like a huge amount for all of my envelope categories, like one time I go ahead and divide that up over four weeks. Sometimes I overspend in a category typically in the first few weeks of the month. I try really hard to not ever go over um, so I'm not carrying like at the end of the month. So I'm not carrying a negative balance in one of my envelopes into the next month. So I kind of always know that this fourth week of the month is like cleanup month and rein in any loose ends, pay back anything we owe from previous overspending in prior weeks. Because, you know, sometimes I do bulk orders at Sam's Club and that is just going to push me beyond my weekly limit, which is fine as long as I make up for it the rest of the month. So I just made a note here that I am over in grocery 105. So I'm going to figure out what I can still spend in grocery and take out 105. And that's basically what I'm going to have left for the rest of January. And same thing for kids. So I know right off the top of my head, I know that I have $25 to put into kids. So I'll minus $11. And then that's what I'm going to have left for the rest of the month of January. <laughs> Okay, so I did some quick math, and when I minus the 105 from what I have remaining in grocery, that is only going to leave me $40, which is fine because I've done a lot of bulk buying for this month, so I really don't foresee needing much beyond that. Um, for kids, we typically do 25, so I'm going to minus the 11. That is going to leave me $14 for kids. Um, for gas, I actually am doing great on that envelope, so I'm not going to add anything to that. Fun, I can't give anything to because we had way too much fun in the beginning of the month, so I'm out there. Miscellaneous, I will give myself my typical $25, and then household will also get $25. And I'm just looking at my money map, which is what I have planned from the beginning of the month when we actually set up and budget for a new month. And I'm just ensuring that I haven't gone over the amounts that I, you know, calculated and budgeted for in the beginning of the month. So um, we already did kids and then out to eat. I don't remember. Let me calculate that one really quick just to see what I've spent on out to eat. Okay. Yeah. Out to eat. I actually was just looking at one of my sheets back here and I had made a note, um, for, I think it was my third week. Yeah. I went ahead and took the total of $45 and then I knew that 
this week, my last week, I would have zero in that one. So that will have done all of our flexible expenses. Now, clothing, I already gave my allocated amount. Groomer, haircuts, home goods, medical and pharmacy, I'm actually going to be giving 50 to both of those. So those are each going to get 50. Okay, and then let's see. Self-care, I already gave. I'm just going to double check because I should have given that on my week one. Yes, and then I think week three we gave that as well. This is why I love doing these. Um, saving child self-care. Yes. Okay. So self-care is all set. Yeah. This is why I love filling these out each week. So I have my cash planning for week one, and then I have my online spending reconciliation for week one. So those kind of pair up and I just check those for like all the notes that I've scribbled down. And that's been working really well for me as far as tracking kind of where everything is at. Okay. Then the last thing I have to do is my savings challenge. So savings challenge will be getting 110. And then I had a really exciting, um, I had some bonus money come in. And this was a mixture of like refunds we had done from Christmas and some late gifts that like monetary gifts that we had received for Christmas. So that is going to be a total of 325. And I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna use this to do like a bonus savings challenge. Um, and actually I realized that in my savings challenge, oh my goodness, I had forgot to do my, let me show you. I just completely forgot to, I have not been doing my savings in 2024. I love using my A6 binders and I just always forget to do these eight and a half by 11 savings trackers that I have. And this one is specifically for Christmas. So I was really happy about that bonus that we got just from the hodgepodge of like returns and late last minute like Christmas gifts we received. So I'm probably going to take most of that and try to color in as many squares as I can. But we'll do that together. Um, typically I do that on Saturday. So I that's like my favorite day of the week right now because I just am obsessed with savings challenges. And speaking of, if you guys didn't see this post yet, I did post it on like the, I don't know, it's like a community tab or something like that on YouTube. It's kind of like a little, a way to post updates. Um, but I made these in honor of my daughter. She absolutely loves, well, when she wasn't sick, her favorite thing to do in the world is bake. Um, her favorite show when she was little, like I'm talking little, like, like weird that she's four years old and loves the Great British Baking Show. And for quite some time, we all had to talk in British accents because she absolutely loved that show. And so we would talk all day in our British accents to each other about our fancy foods and how everyone had done in the competition. <laughs> so I'm really putting myself out there. It helps that my face isn't on camera. I'm just gonna say that right now. So anyway, I made these really cute, uh, well, I think they're cute. I made them, so of course I, I'm in love with them. Um, but they just, they make me think of her and it was just a special thing because, yeah. So anyway, um, I think all of these are under $70, but everyone is different. And then on the back, because I'm all about like, there's no way I'm leaving an empty space, you know, like I've got to use up all the space. So on the back are the color and save options where you like designate how much you want something to be worth. You color it in and you save that amount. So they're dual purpose, they're laminated, and I do have them on my Etsy shop. I'm going to be using these in February. I probably won't scratch them um, on camera, but I'm definitely going to do the color and save because I love them and I think they're adorable and they fit really nicely in an A6 envelope. So of course these are ones I made, but um, I did buy some envelopes as well to try. And yeah, these just, they look so cute and they fit so nice and you can reuse them because they're laminated. So after you've scratched these, you can use like a permanent marker to X them off or you can like reapply scratch stickers to them at a later date. Um, but yeah, I really like them and I was really excited. This will be the first time I've ever used scratchers. So although I don't wanna give the amounts away on camera, so I probably won't scratch them, but I will be using the backside. But yeah, so this is my own artwork and I think it turned out really cute and I don't know, these things with big eyeballs are really in right now, so that's what I went with, but those are those. So anyway, I do my savings challenges on Saturday, so if you're subscribed, you should get a notification um, when those come out. So those are really fun to do, I really enjoy it. At some point, I'd love to do those live because it just has such a 
relaxing atmosphere about it. But okay, let me go ahead and I think for now I'm probably going to have to get back to these and I'm wondering if it's going to be more of like an online transaction that I reimburse because I just don't know exactly how much they're going to be and I don't really know what to plan for. Um, but we can go ahead and do grocery. So for grocery, I'm just going to do two twenties, and then for kids, I will do a ten, and we'll have to do four ones. Miscellaneous is getting a twenty and a five. Household will also get a twenty and a five. Medical will get 50, pharmacy will get 50. And then our savings challenge, we're gonna do 110. Ooh, so I think I'm gonna do, oh goodness, I'm gonna do three tens. I think this is the hardest part, is figuring out what to do. So that leaves me, uh, 110 minus 30 leaves me 80. Mm, let's do, Okay, I'm gonna do a bunch of ones again. I liked having 30 ones. So that's 30 plus 30 minus 110 leaves us 50. So 10 fives is what we would need to get to our 110. Okay, oh my goodness, then we have the 325. I'm not even, <laughs> that's a lot to get. Okay, let's do, maybe I'll just do, I think I should just do some 20s in this one because if I do this bigger savings challenge, yeah, these are like way higher amounts. So let me do, okay, I'm gonna try for 10 20s and I can always, you know, condense where I need to. So that'll take care of 200. So that leaves me 125. And then maybe I'll do another maybe I'll do four tens and then what do we have here um okay so I'm gonna do ten ones okay so we're at 200 I'm getting confused plus 40 plus 10 minus 325 okay so we are gonna need to do 15 fives Whew, that was a little bit of a brain burner for me. Okay, but we figured it out. So I'm going to add these up really quick. So that's three 44 ones, which is $44. Oh, goodness. That's a lot of, ooh, that's a lot of fives. That's okay, though. So that's going to be 27, which is $135 of fives. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is 80. And then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is going to be 280. Okay, and then we just have um, two 50s, which will be 100. Okay, so let me add these all up just to make sure that we're okay. Okay, so I'm getting 639. And then I'm gonna just make sure here, 40, 14, 25, 25, um, 100, 110, 329. Okay, so this is my plan for the last week of January. I cannot believe it. Um, so this will be our week four. So my plan is to grab all of this currency from the bank, all these different denominations, and I'm super excited to do um, my cash stuffing. I might even do two videos because ooh, I'm hoping that I can close out some challenges. And if I do, I can bring in some of my new ones that I'm really excited about. So um, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet. So we'll see. That seems like a lot of money to do all at once because I, I just love taking my time with my savings challenge. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but wowzers, this is like a lot of fives. <laughs> so and a lot of ones. Um, but I'm I'm here for it. I'm excited and it's going to be fun. But anyway, this is all I have for us today. Thank you so much for joining me on this kind of closeout of the month for January cash planning. And tomorrow I will be back to cash stuff. So I'll see you then. And it shows about